Um, welcome to this space. I would love if anybody is on their camera to not on their camera to come on just for a moment to see your face. If that feels good, then go off camera again. That's absolutely fine. But hello, hello. Because otherwise I'm going to make up all these stories about what you're doing in the background, <laughs> which is distracting from my head. But perfect. If you want to go off camera, if you're eating your lunch, if you're brushing your teeth, whatever, do that. But nice to see you. Thanks for coming on there. Oh, someone's quite, how can I mute everybody here? There we go. Okay, so I'm Ilsa and I'm based down in Portobello in sunny Costa del Joppa. And my background is within the arts. So I did a master's at Edinburgh College of Art. I did my undergrad at Glasgow. And I was working for a long time in the arts, making work for exhibition and doing workshops with um, children, adults and underrepresented groups, mainly for museums and galleries. And um, that was my practice for a long time until I hit a point in my practice where I just was not able to make work. And I'd been through a bit of a, um, um, a kind of traumatic period. I'd lost several people in my life. I'd been a carer um, and I became a mum at the same time. So my nervous system was in overload and I just kept on, kept on going. Um, what I didn't realize was that my body was addicted to adrenaline. So I was finding it really hard to stay still and really hard to slow down. Um, and it was my body just staying in this fight, flight or freeze response, staying in a kind of activated response because I thought there was more threats coming. The point that this became really problematic was when it stopped me doing the things that lit me up. It stopped me being able to communicate with people easily. It stopped me making artwork. It stopped me thinking creatively. It stopped me leaving the house sometimes. And it was literally got to the point where I was fainting every day, every other day for about three years. And doctors had various ideas of why this was. And then I went along to a movement workshop and within this movement workshop, I found that I cried for about two hours. On the way home, I didn't know why, I pulled over in the car and pressed voice notes on my phone. I went, don't know what the fuck happened there, but something felt powerful and I need to lean into it. So a month later, I completely pivoted what I was doing and I went to London and retrained in a healing movement practice called NIA. Um, this was for, for me, for my body and for my need to want to get back and fall in love with my creativity again. Um, and it was a really immersive week uh, in a studio, basically learning how to access your nervous system again, how to recalibrate, how to sense and feel in safety. And in all honesty, I part of it I was kind of arms folded in the corner of the room not wanting to participate at all this did not feel good it felt vulnerable I'm not someone that likes making noise or standing out in front of people ironically move to feel the business that I've built since is exactly that <laughs> so what I needed most was the thing that I was resisting most um, at the end of doing that training I came back to Edinburgh and we went into lockdown that month so I continued leaning in and I went on to retrain in um, transformational coaching. Uh, I found that in coaching, I was wanting to invite people that were in a free stance and that stance that I had felt myself into their bodies. So where we don't necessarily always have the language to describe what we're feeling, um, our emotions, our thoughts, uh, we have other forms. And this is a community right here that know the power of creating and using other forms of language, such as singing or dancing or arts, right? So I was bringing people into their bodies. That's known as somatic coaching. So somatic coaching is just coaching from a body centered place. So whereas therapy would take you as talking um, and using verbals, it takes you into your past, looks at trauma and how it's sitting and how you deal with that now. Coaching 
looks at trauma and how it's affecting you now and how it's stopping you move forward into your bigger vision right so we want to look forward we can sometimes have in our head the idea of um what we need to do what we want to do but our physical actions stop us from doing that so somatic coaching works with tuning into the mind the body and our emotions all at the same time so how that plays out in sessions is sometimes through postural work sometimes through a bit of shouting sometimes through a bit of dance sometimes through creativity one of my clients last month ended up doing clay work in the end and it was just through that manipulating of the clay that something she got to a level below her words um, and that helped articulate what she was feeling and she went on to move through that emotion and through that block and opened up onto the other side of it so i run um so he said a little bit about it but i run move to feel which is a small business i set up two years ago next month and it works with that somatic practice so every week I have two sessions outdoors, which is open to anybody. And it's less vulnerable than the one-to-ones, even though it's outside. So we use silent disco headsets so that everybody is connected. And my voice and the music comes straight to your ears. It takes you on a movement journey. And the movement journey kind of tracks you through various different feeling states in your body as a way to release things that might be blocked or stuck within your nervous system or your unconscious. It's playful, it's fun, it's um, sometimes emotional. It start uh, on the ground, we start connecting with our breath and then we go right up into celebration and, and we come back down and we always end up on the ground at the end again. Uh, this is open to everybody twice a week um, and I also do it in bespoke groups. So I've been through to Glasgow School of Art and worked with the postgraduate students there a few times. And so we use that at the start of a session to then go on to do um, art writing or creativity afterwards. It's a quick fire, five tequilas. It's a kind of straight to knocking out the ego and the things that protect us from, from making our work. and. Um, it just gives a greater access to our inner knowing and our truths and our intuition and our creativity and however you want to call sense of spirit but that thing that zest that makes you do what you do right everybody in this room is somebody that works with creativity it's not easy it's a choice it's a lifestyle it's a mindset and it's difficult to get to that place and nurture it so it's a space to do that um, I work with all sorts of groups from um, recently alcoholic men in Leith to uh, children and adults and one-to-one -one sessions are in my studio here. Um, yeah, so that's a bit about Move to Feel, but today it would be great to have a little bit of an experiment into feeling into some of these things and what I'm talking about. So first up, um, I was wondering if people would like to kind of zone out of their heads for a moment and in, invite you into a bit of a kind of body orientation. So if it feels good to you, you might want to turn your camera off now. You might want to leave it on. You might want to stay seated. You might want to stand up. But what we'll do is I'm just going to share some music and I'm just going to guide you through about seven minutes of getting out of our heads and into our bodies. So, can you hear the music? Yeah. So, welcoming yourself back to this space. If it feels safe for you, close down your eyes. Just remove yourself from all information around you. If it doesn't feel safe to close your eyes, just draw your eyes down towards the floor. And bring your awareness to your mind, what's busy in your mind just now.
Now bring your awareness to your body. How does your body feel right now? Without changing anything, just notice your posture. Notice any aches or pains in your body. Now bring your awareness to your breath. How much of your breath are you using? How much of your lungs are you using? Now gently roll your shoulders up and round. Plant your feet on the ground. And take a really deep breath in. In through your nose if possible and out through your mouth. Again, roll your shoulders up and round, draw your shoulder blades down your back and take a deep breath in. Now elongate your spine, lifting the crown of your head up towards your ceiling. Exhale if it feels good with an open mouth. And now last breath in, notice your breath coming in through your nostrils or through your mouth and see if you can fill yourself all the way up when you think you're full pull in even more breath and then exhale with a sigh nobody can hear you exhale with a sigh <sighs> now, if it feels good stand up out of your chair if you want to sit down and stay seated that's absolutely fine as well but bring now, keep your eyes, gaze closed, keep your attention inwards and bring all your attention down to your feet. So slowly, slowly press every toe into the ground. See if you can articulate every single toe, whether that's through your trainers, your slippers, your socks. See if you can push every toe into the ground, all awareness down into your feet. Now into the balls of your feet, pushing down into the balls of your feet. Perfect. Round the outside of your feet into your heels, your landing pad. And from here, take a deep breath in and drop your weight down through your hips through your knees into the ground like you're sinking into sand trying to make a footprint now bring your awareness to your ankles and begin to rotate your ankles flexing and rotating your ankles like you never felt an ankle before what did they do what does this curious joint do in your body what shapes can it make if you wobble, that's perfect. Fall off balance. Coming up through your shins, through your calves now, come into your knees and bend your knees. If you're in a chair, just play with straightening out and bending back, noticing the different degrees of your knees. Up through your thighs, squeeze your thigh bones. Squeeze your muscles around your thigh bones, the biggest bone in your body. Bend your knees and come into your hips. Begin to make little circles with your hips. Tiny little circles like you're stirring an espresso cup. Bend your knees, soften your ankles. And then see how big you want to make those circles. See if you can stir all the way out to a big mug of coffee. Perfect, both directions. Now keep that coming up your belly, from your hips, up your belly, into your rib cage. Draw your rib cage forward. Fill it to the left. Tuck it into your back. Fill it to the right. Notice where your ribs join on to your body. And then up into your shoulders. Bring all your awareness into your shoulders and yawn your armpits open. Feeling into the underarms. 
move your arms from your elbows drawing into the space around you with your elbows and all the way down to your wrists opening the shoulders from your wrists circling your arms all the way open circles in your wrists and articulate every finger tickle your fingers scratch your fingers make a fist squeeze really tight squeeze your teeth squeeze your bum cheeks squeeze all your bones in your body squeeze all your flesh fingers wrists elbows shoulders coming into your neck in your neck away from your body and just gently stretching out pulling the crown of your head towards your ceiling and from here take a really deep breath in and exhale before bringing your awareness back to the screen or anything just notice if there's been any shift in how you feel than when you arrived if there's no shift that's fine that's perfect if there is that's new information okay when you're ready bring yourself back to your chair you might want to come back on screen you might not so now we have awareness, now we have a sensation all the way through to our body and our whole body holds so much wisdom that we tend not to tune into because we're so busy in, from our shoulders up, we're so busy looking for answers from the outside, we're so busy looking at media, news, images, concepts, dialing in for, for advice from Google answers externally when actually we hold all the information we need from the inside but we have to practice tuning into the rest of our sensory system in from our shoulders all the way down to receive this information so how this is helpful in our everyday is well we cannot solve our problems from the same thinking as we use to create them that's an einstein quote so if we're stay in the head and you've got a problem and you're only looking at it from one perspective, which is from your head, then you're less likely to be able to solve your problem or create something new from that space. So we want to come into the rest of our body to change our perspective. Um, and the quickest way to change is to shift our chemical makeup as well. So whilst my body was stuck in fight, flight or freeze, this is exactly the, the, what we need to help us escape threats, but it also doesn't serve us. So the same chemical reaction in our body is made when we're trying to escape a tsunami or a fire or something of terror. Unfortunately, the same chemicals are produced in our body when we're late for the bus or we have a deadline to work towards. And what's not helpful is when that stress cycle stays on high alert and we, got, and we get caught up in this high alert state. So what we want to do, and it's very, very easy, is to shift that chemical reaction out. So like um, animals do, in a kind of, uh, when, they, when a gazelle is trying to escape from a lion, the first thing it'll do if it manages to survive is take itself off to safety and have a shake and you might have seen a dog maybe having a shake the animal kingdom all managed to complete their stress cycle by doing this thing which is shaking what that does is releases um, the adrenaline that's stuck in our body the cortisol chemical and it increases our testosterone so we've got a nice balance of feeling stronger and braver in ourselves but reducing our stress so if you would like to now you only need to do it for like two minutes and it can happen at any time in the day so anytime you have a deadline 
anytime you have something impending, if your boss shouts at you and you leave the room, I and mean, you're maybe not going to do it in the hallway, have a shake. If you have, uh, you miss the bus and there's a shock or there's a fright in your body and you feel that state of adrenaline, the easiest thing to do is to shake. So again, I'm going to jump on in here and be a little bit spicy and offer you the chance to shake any of your shit out now. So coming back to your feet, if it feels good, even in your chair, if it feels dumb. So get up on your feet if it feels good. And all you need to do is shake your whole body. Soften your hips and shake all the way across your chest. Have a really good tantrum. If you're in your chair, stamp your feet. Fists. Soften your hips. The biggest muscle to contract in stress is your psoas muscle and it's in your hips. So see if you can soften your hips and give them a good shake. Right across your chest, down your arms into fists. Finger flicks. Bring it all the way down your legs, into your feet. You have over 50 bones in your feet. That's a lot of shaking potential in your feet. Keep going. All the way up into your neck and your head. Every hair photo. Cross your head. Shake, 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 shake. Tailbone. Now chunk up your body. Squeeze your fists. Strong arms. Push your body. Make them really tight. Grit your teeth. Bring your feet together. Make your body really small and tight and restricted. Squeeze really, really hard. Release. Shake even bigger now. If you're at home on your own and you have noise that you want to let out, let out noise. Let out a sigh or a grump. Keep going. All the way up into your cheeks, face, nose. And from here, place your hands on your heart and one hand on your belly. And just feel the activation in your body. Feel the release. You don't need to know what you've just released. You don't need to make sense of it. That's not the point. We don't need to decode it. Whether that's energy that you're conscious of just now or stuck energy from a past trauma. This is something that you can bring in at any point you feel freeze, which is particularly helpful when you're creating work, right? So let's let that one go. Come back to your screen or to your seat, whatever. So two, two, two little things that you can do in your everyday. Of course, we have so many things that we can go to, classes that we can go to and things that we can do and alterations in our life. But quite often they take money, quite often they take an hour of your time and it's quite hard to fit these things into your life. There's two little hacks. Do your body scan first thing in the morning or before you sit down to work. Do a shake anytime you're feeling stuck, anytime you feel your adrenaline getting tight, anxiety setting in, anytime you want to think outside of the box, right? The next, how are we doing for time? That's us it. We've got like no, five no, minutes you're more? Good. You've got, no, you've got like what time, don't worry. Okay. So um, if anybody wants to read more on the idea of shaking, there's two things you can look at. There's TRE therapy that you can look at and that's used um, trauma release experiencing. That's used for lots of people at one time or individually. And it's a lovely release of energy Hips and thighs. I'm going to put somebody on mute. Um, 
and also Dr. Peter Levine. So he's the guy, Dr. Peter Levine, that originally studied animals and we're noticing what they were doing. And we're seeing that us humans in our modern worlds are not um, responding in the same way. We have uh, addiction to holding on to our stress because we often fall into thinking that's a safer space to be when we're in control. So he's a great guy to look at. There's a brilliant book called Waking the Tiger, which is a really good read if anybody's curious about learning more about somatics. So the next little hack that we're gonna do, <laughs> and I think I'm gonna invite you to do it in your breakout rooms actually. So again, back to the animal kingdom. What do they do when they are needing to show power? They bulk up their bodies. A gorilla will totally bulk up its body. Any other animal will make themselves bigger, whether that's fanning a tail out, whether that's opening wings, whether that's fanning neck scales out, whether that's showing teeth, they will bulk up their bodies. Us humans do it as well. We, we like a good arm folding. We like a good chin up power stance looking down towards, yeah, exactly. <laughs> looking down your nose, right? We, and unfortunately, that our non-verbals, our body language, affects other people, but it also is hardwired back to ourselves. So how we hold our posture affects how we think about ourselves as well. So we really want to alter our posture to be able to feel better on a daily basis. So tiny little tweaks. Again, how did that feel at the start when you actually came away from your screen and rolled your shoulders up and down and back and lifted your chin? Did you feel some release across your chest? Did you come away from that kind of feeling of shrinking? The first thing we do in our posture when we're feeling scared or um, in doubt is we'll, co we'll cocoon. So if we've got a project to deliver, if we've got some work to make, if we wanna get into flow, we wanna open up. That's exactly what the animal kingdom also do when they want to open up and show off. So scientists, I'm not a scientist, as I said, I've come from, I'm not a psychologist, I've come from an arts background. So this is all new material to me and I just wanna share it because it has helped me so much that I no longer faint, I haven't fainted in the past year. It's made a fundamental difference to the way my nervous system is and how I, how I perform. And I would have never thought four years ago that I'd be doing anything and have a business that I have now where it's integrated all of the things that light me up. So I'm passionate about sharing this, but do not take my <laughs> science as gospel. <laughs> I'm not a clinical psych um, psychologist. Anyway, those folk that are have done the research and they have done tests and what they call, what we call um, gestures, like body language, they call non-verbal communication. How we give that out, to other people affects how we think about ourselves, but also our own non-verbals affect ourselves, right? So can we fake how we feel to ourselves? Science says, yes. So you might have heard of a kind of power pose stance, kind of wonder woman, hands on hips, or any superhero stance or my fist up, fist pump. It's actually the first thing that we do in triumph. If you notice anybody who scores a goal on a football pitch, what do they do? They lift their arms up, they flare their arms out and they run around in that kind of freeing, expansive pose. Same in a, running a marathon, they get over the finish line and the arms go up. Whether you're blind, they've tested, whether you have sight and whether you've been blind from birth or not, the body does the same thing. So there's this natural one to expand your body in triumph. Okay, so can we fake this feeling of power from a stance of positivity from, from a power pose? Yes, we can. So studies have shown that if you do this for two minutes, you will actively change the chemicals in, chemical makeup in your body. Your testosterone will go up, your cortisol will go down. The other little hack here is smile. So whilst we often find it difficult to smile, if you have started with a smile at the beginning of your day, 
you're more likely to catch on to smiles for the rest of your day. If you're not feeling like a smile, you put a pen between your lips like this for two minutes and it forces the side of your mouth to change shape and holding a pen between your lips literally changes the chemicals within your body. So your dopamine goes up, your serotonin goes up, all your happy hormones increase from just putting a pen in your mouth for two minutes. What we're gonna do in breakout rooms is, I'm not gonna make you do it in front of everyone here, is when you connect in your breakout room, don't even introduce your name. Don't even go there yet. What I'd love to do is if everybody could get into a power stance, a power pose, somebody have a timer, shove a pen in your mouth or a straw or anything that you have nearby, a, 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 a paintbrush, anything will do, a marker pen, a sharpie, don't tell me you've not got something nearby. Put a pen in your mouth and take a power pose, anyone you want, hands on hips, legs spread, wide open, arms in the air, punching, wide out arms as if you're flying, whatever it is, just some sort of expansion of your body, feeling your feet grounded on the ground like we started, and your upper body lengthening towards the sky. Lift your chin slightly. It's important that chin and forehead come up a little bit in your power pose, with a pairing in your mouth, okay? Do it together in your first breakout room. You don't have to do it in every breakout room. You're only going to have to share this with a few people. <laughs> they're not your family. They're not your friends. Whatever happens in the Zoom room stays in the Zoom room. Okay, this is a chance to just lean into it. If you hate it, perfect. New information. Um, <laughs> yes, love it. Uh, and then afterwards, I want you to share in your discussions with each other who you are, but you don't need to share that if you don't want to you might just want to talk about how that felt in your body first so we're removing actually our status a little bit and we're just, just seeing each other as a bit of an animal a bit of a kind of we're just humans here so without a power status in mind without judgments without um yeah without that extra information just see how you feel in your body if the conversation opens up then that's when you go into sharing how that's felt for you and introduce yourselves. Um, and if you're brave enough, I'd love you to share a vision that you have, something that you would love to happen in your life, something that you secretly really want to do, that you're not often, you don't kind of share with people much. Yeah, something you want to work towards or something that you want to happen. If then you complete that and you're into a new, um, a new breakout room, then just do share with each other anything that helps you in your nervous system, anything that helps you on a daily basis. Reconnect with yourself. Um, websites, books, tips, rituals, whatever. And the more we talk about these, the more the, the tips and tricks we get off other people, um, the more access we have to making these things easy. So we don't have to go on a weekend retreat. You don't have to go and be fixed somewhere. That we can just bring these things in on a really micro level on a daily basis, all the way throughout the day to slowly shift so that we're practicing and exercising the rest of our body's intelligence to match where our brain's being taken to often, which is looking outside, 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 outside. So we need to kind of up our levels. Yeah, I've kind of rushed through a whole load of things. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody wants to ask any questions just now, or whether you're happy to go into your breakout rooms.